You're about to watch a free five minute sample of a live training video. At the end of the video, I'll tell you where to watch the whole thing or just scroll down for more info. I'll see you in five minutes. It's there, you can spend a lot of time wasted jumping around trying to change all your settings. But more importantly even than saving time changing the settings is ensuring you have the same settings, right? If you're doing a shoot and you're shooting in, uh, you know, I don't know, 1080p, 60, blah, 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 whatever, you don't want to change the settings because you need something different and then have to change them back and go, wait, was it 60 or was it, was it 30? What was I shooting at? Which, comp which codec was I, which aspect ratio was I using? Which audio settings was I using? If you have to change all those every time, your odds of making a mistake are, are considerably higher. So by having it as a preset, you get it all set up, you tap one preset and you load it. And you might call it, um, you know, my family vacation preset. And then you have it the, um, the epic film that I'm working on preset, whatever it might be, but you have this preset. So it's a super, super great thing to do. So make sure you do set up your presets. They'll be very, very useful. Next up is CMS. CMS for, stands for Content Management System. So you can do a few things in here. First of all, there's time code track. So that is on by default. It is simply laying a time code track, which is based off of time of day, into the content, which is going to make it, which is something that will be visible in the editor. It's not something you really see in here. Um, it's just on by default. I don't think it really takes up any extra space. And it's just one of those things that you have that extra layer of metadata. But if you wanted to get rid of it for some reason, you could. Just leave that on. Underneath that, you have content management. And this allows you to add all kinds of other great metadata. So I can put a production name. I can put scene numbers on my shots. I can do all kinds of stuff. So let's go in and call it production name. We'll call this uh, Photo Joseph's Photo Joseph Great Movie, because clearly this is just an epic film we're shooting here. Photo Joseph Great Movie. And then I'm going to say scene. Let's just say we're partway through shooting. We're going to call it scene 5A. Cool. And uh, this is take. We're going to call it take 3. We're on take 3 right now. Okay, so that's that. Well, or take thirteen. That works too. Um, so that's where we. That's where we left off. Okay, so now I shoot something. All right, so I'm going to hit the record button, and I'm shooting, shooting, shooting. Yay, we're shooting, shooting, and I stop. Okay, and now we're going to do another shot. Okay, ready? Uh, action! And we hit shoot, and shooting, 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 and we stop. And then I go into the playback, and you'll see in here that there are. Well, of course, I named it such a long name, but you can see there if you look closely. It says Photo Joseph Great Movie. There's two of them. Look underneath it. It says Scene 5A, Take 13. And then above that, Scene 5A, Take 14. It automatically bumps up your take number between takes. So that's awesome. So you go back in and change your scene number manually, but the take number will increase automatically by one every time you stop recording and start again. Got to love that. So that just makes the whole asset management a lot simpler. So if you are actually shooting a larger production, you've got a note, you've got a, a, a clipboard or whatever of all your scenes that you're going to be shooting. So this is scene 1A or scene 15 7. You know, you can name it whatever you want. So scene 15 7 32 slash B. And then there's take one, take two, take three, and so on. And this automatically pens those take numbers for you. And for the rest of the information, you just type it in however you want. Pretty cool. I like that. All righty. Next up, back into the gear menu here. I think that was everything under CMS. Let's make sure. Yes, that was everything there. I'm going to turn that off because I really don't need that information being embedded. The next one's pretty straightforward. This is hardware. This is if you have additional hardware that you're using with your, your uh, phone. So you've got the DJI Osmo Mobile, which will allow you certain controls and so on that you might have with that hardware device. Um, same thing with the Zune Smooth 4. That's a gimbal that you may have hardware adaption to or had hardware control. So those are gimbals that have start stop and possibly other controls on them that you can then control this app from so you can start stop recording without having to reach up and touch the phone itself pretty cool needless to say unless you have the hardware it doesn't do any good so if you don't have the hardware don't touch but if you have the hardware touch next one is for the anamorphic adapter and this is for the moon dog adapter but that is the same aspect ratio as the moment adapters and if you tap that you can see what's happening in the scene there it is stretching distorting that footage because that will get re-stretched by the lens itself, de-squeezed, if you will, and, uh, and the footage will look normal. So that's what, something you would enable if you were shooting with an anamorphic adapter. Anamorphic adapter is a piece of glass sitting in front of the lens that is going to actually distort the image coming in, and then this will distort it the other way. So pretty neat, right? Okay. Next. Oh, and then de-squeeze Moondog preview only. So that will only do the de-squeezing in the preview. So what you're seeing on screen right there. However, the actual recorded footage will not be de-squeezed, which means you're going to take that into post, into Final Cut Premiere, whatever you're using, and do squeeze it there, which is 
usually if you're doing kind of pro work, that's what you're going to want. You're going to want to do that de-squeeze yourself. You're going to gain more pixels that way. If you let the software de-squeeze it, then you will be ready to edit as it is just from what's shot here, from what's captured, but you will be sacrificing pixels to do so. You've just watched a five minute sample of a live training video. Head to photojoseph.com slash store to see the rest of it, as well as the other videos in this series, and to sign up as a member so you have access to the ever-growing library of live training courses.